Yesterday we explored a little bit of St. Louis, went to the top of the Gateway Arch and ate some delicious local foods. And today we're about three hours southwest of the city in central Missouri to hike around Ha Ha Tonka State Park, which is probably the coolest park name ever. Ha Ha Tonka is an Osage Indian phrase meaning laughing waters. And if the name isn't intriguing enough, <laughs> we saw the beauty here and the unique features and we knew we had to come and check it out. And first up, we are hiking to some castle ruins. So you may be wondering, why the heck is there randomly a castle here in Missouri? So in 1903, a wealthy businessman named Robert Snyder visited the area and basically just fell in love with its beauty, decided he wanted to buy land and build a European style castle. They started building the castle in 1905, but unfortunately in 1906, he died in one of the state's first ever automobile accidents. Snyder's sons finished building the castle in 1922, although not as elaborate as originally planned. It was eventually leased as a hotel and then unfortunately in 1942 a fire broke out and all that remains today are these ruins here behind me. I think these ruins are really neat because it reminds me of when we were in Rome looking at the ruins. Obviously not as historical or significant as that, but it's really cool because you can look in there and see that it was multi-layered and you can see where things are. So on the walls, on the other side, on the inside, you can see the fireplace, the, what's left of it. And then also on the other side of the ruins, it's the, there's more of the wall there and you can see the chimney coming up. So it's just really cool to see what was there before. And then unfortunately you can see the smoke from the fire that took it over on the outside where it's dark and gray. So as you see, they have these fences here. You used to be able to walk more. I don't know if you could walk in it, but you could definitely walk up closer to it because there's railings up there on the, like, the porches, I guess. And I don't know when they put these in, probably a few years ago, but that would've been really cool to be able to get up close because there's an awesome deck over there that overlooks the kind of the water down below. That would've been cool, but still really cool to be here. So this water tower behind me served two main purposes during the castle's existence. The first is that apparently the castle workers lived underneath this water tower, but we don't see anywhere where they would have gone or how they got there. So it must be closed up now. And the second, it gravity fed water to the castle. And this building actually escaped the fire in the 40s, but unfortunately in the 70s, some darn vandals came and burned this thing down or burned it. And all that's left is what is here right now. So this park is also home to the 12th largest spring in Missouri, and they have a few different trails you can take to go check out the springs. One thing that's really nice about this park is all the trails are pretty short. So we found three we wanna go do, and we're gonna try to connect them all into a loop. So we parked here at the spring trail, and we're gonna take that trail all the way around here, and then connect with the island trail, which is on this little island up here. And then we're gonna come back around to the parking area, I think, and connect down to this Devil's Kitchen trail, which I think will then loop us back around to the parking area. 
We aren't sure how long it will be. Each trail's between like 0.8 miles or 1.4 miles. So we're thinking maybe like three miles total. So I don't know. <laughs> It is nuts. It's this really bright shade of blue. It reminds me of when we were in Idaho in the summer in the Twin Falls area visiting all those springs. It's just so stunning. And we have a polarizer lens on this camera. We have polarized sunglasses, which really helps make the color pop. It takes away all the reflections and you just get to see like that deep blue and the green and it's just really gorgeous. Apparently there's a cave on this island, but there's a sign up at the top that says it's a restricted cave, so you have to go with someone and have a permit and all that jazz. Looking at it, this is not a cave for me. I don't uh, I don't like caves in general, and this one is, looks like it's really small and tight and you gotta crawl through it. No, not for Adam. <laughs> this is probably the smallest cave I've ever seen that I know people could actually go in. It is very tight. Oh man, this is, people go in this? I don't know. That might get a big no for me too and I actually really like caves. just on this trail which is just through the forest and all of a sudden bam there's this cave hole thing cool i don't know if you can see anything i don't know if the camera's focusing down in there in the dark hole but it's probably like a 20 foot drop at least and i think it just keeps going and going all the way to the other side of the earth i think we found the other side we're on the other side of the earth <laughs> cool that was totally unexpectedly awesome. <laughs> to be honest, we don't really remember how we found the state park but we're very glad we did. I think we were Googling like unique things to do in Missouri. We saw a photo of the castle and we were like, heck yeah, we gotta go there. And then we saw a photo of the springs and we're like, yeah, 100% going there. But now we are headed to another state park just up the road because we have a sick camp spot that we want to enjoy for as long as possible. Tonight we are camping at Lake of the Ozarks, which is actually one of the largest man-made lakes in the Midwest. It's shaped kind of like this and it has over 1100 miles of shoreline. We snagged this amazing spot. It's site number 161 in case you come here. It's like 20 bucks a night. We arrived last night in the dark, but with the full moon last night, we could see the water and just knew our view would be incredible. And it is. Look at this, we have all this lake behind us. We have some cliffs behind us too. And the best part is so far, there's absolutely no one around us. 
And as promised at the end of our last vlog, we picked up a few food items in St. Louis that we didn't have the chance to try, but really want to try. And first up, Proville cheese. So Provolone cheese is a mix of provolone, cheddar, and Swiss, and it's very, very popular on St. Louis style pizza. It has apparently a very low melting point, so at room temperature, it kind of has this like gooey, buttery texture. I read that this is apparently has an acquired taste, so people say, but it's a mix of three cheeses that I really like. So I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm confused on why it's, an, why it's an acquired taste. I don't know, it smells like cheese. <laughs> cheese never is like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to try cheese. But uh, yeah, and I also read that apparently, according to the FDA, it can't really be considered cheese because it has too low of a moisture content. Whatever, <laughs> FDA. It's really good. <laughs> I mean, it kind of tastes like, like a white American cheese. That, definitely the texture of it. But I mean, if you handed this to me, I wouldn't be able to tell you it was Provel. I don't know. I would probably think it was like white American cheese. It's really good though. Has a very soft and kind of flexible-ness about it. All right. It's really good. <laughs> I'm with you though. It tastes just kind of like a white cheddar. Oh, it's delicious. We'll definitely have to try it on pizza next time. We have a different main course we're doing. You'll see soon. So we aren't doing pizza this time, but we may have to go find some more of this to have on a pizza in a future vlog, because this is delicious. There's no acquisition needed. No, it's I think it's super good. Maybe if you hate cheese. Yeah, I guess. We also got some crackers and some little baby pepperoni nuggets to kind of do like a little fancy lunchable. I don't know, with the cheese. Since we got pepperoni with the cheese, it's kind of like pizza, right? Hey, there it it kind of counts. Really good together. And then a crispy, uh, crispy dough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mona, do you want to try some Proval? Uh -uh, down. Good girl. You like it? Two paws up. Our next St. Louis food are pork steaks. So pork steaks are basically just a cut of the pork butt or pork shoulder. They weren't invented in St. Louis, but they became popular there. And normally you have them with barbecue sauce and we heard of this sauce called Malls, but we're having ours naked. So we have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is the pork steaks are really thick, so they're taking forever to cook. The one that's on there now has probably been on there for over 30 minutes, and last we checked, it still was not done. But one of them was a bit thinner, so we took it off so we could actually try it. So we're splitting this one. We also made some green beans to go with it. So we're gonna try this one now so it didn't get overcooked, and then we'll eat the other one later. <laughs> So I might have exaggerated a little bit. They're not totally naked. I have salt and pepper and adobo on there. So a little bit of flavor there. They look so good. They have this nice like char on it from yeah. the cast iron. Oh, they look delicious. They're nice and fatty and oh. meaty. It's gonna be good. I think it's gonna be delicious. I don't right. think we've ever had this before. Not pork steak, no. Cheers. Cheers. Heck yeah. That is so bomb. Mm -hmm. And they're so cheap. It was $4 for both of these and they were huge. It was a pound and a half. It's super soft, it has such good flavor. It's not, you know, too lean, but it's not too fatty that you can't really enjoy it. Oh, cooked to perfection. Our final St. Louis food is Ted Drew's frozen custard. You guys didn't think we were gonna go to St. Louis without getting Ted Drew's, did you? <laughs> this is apparently a super famous place in St. Louis. And so this, <laughs> smoke. <laughs> so this is uh, custard, like I said, not ice cream. And the difference is custard has uh, egg yolk mixed within and so this flavor is, I think it's a vanilla base with Tea Dad cookies in there. I had never heard of Tea Dad cookies to dads. <laughs> tea, 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 tea dads to dads. <laughs> I don't know. But apparently it's a Scott, scotch, scotch oatmeal. Oatmeal scotch cookie. Oatmeal scotch cookie. 
I don't know. Sounds good. Sounded good when I asked what it was, so that's what I went with. But you can get like Reese's and all kinds of stuff in there. They have all kinds of crazy flavors. So we bought this yesterday. Yeah. And then we put <laughs> it in the freezer. So it may not be as good today. It kind of melted down a little bit and then it refroze. Uh, it's still going to taste great. Just might not be the consistency or the crunchy. Co I don't know. Might be good. We just didn't want the plain boring vanilla they sell at the store. Yeah, no way. All you could get was chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry at the store. And we wanted something something with some chunk. Got some tea dad in there. Ta dad. Ta dad. Yeah, the custard's awesome. Nice and creamy, but then the cookie in there, yeah, it's very oatmeal-y. And I love oatmeal cookies, oatmeal raisin, oatmeal chocolate chip raisin, oatmeal, anything cookie, super good. This is, this is classic. So similar to Dairy Queen, they'll like flip it over for you when they're done, but Adam said they just like slammed it on the counter for him. So maybe that's like their new way. It's like, it doesn't fly up. I, I don't know. Or maybe they were just having a, a rough day. <laughs> Technically, I'm not supposed to eat this for many reasons, but I told Adam we I told Adam we'd only get one because he gets to eat most of it. But we'll see what happens. Am I getting in trouble? Mmm. Ooh, that's really good. There's a good like kind of like the cinnamony oatmeal cookie flavor that you get in like an oatmeal cookie that goes really well with the custard. That is delicious. It's no clementines, I will say. We're fighting the urge to go in and crack one of those pints. We have open. two pints of clementines in the freezer that you might see in our next vlog, and it's torture. But yeah, this is still really, really, really dang good. I feel like it's softer if you get it there. It's a little harder now, mm -hmm. but the flavors are on point. I'm gonna destroy this Ted Drews before Catherine can steal any more bites from me. Yeah, get away, <laughs> get away. But that's gonna do it for our time here in Missouri. We're going to continue our drive towards Texas, and the next time you see us, we'll be in Arkansas. Despite what it looks like on our little B-roll shots, we don't always hold hands on our hikes. <laughs> we actually never hold hands on our <laughs> hikes. I just think it looks cuter when we're doing these for little sure. walking shots. <laughs>